And hey, welcome to Hannity. And tonight, the radical left there heaping nothing but praise on jacked up Joe Biden's State of the Union address, trying to deflect from just how strange, weird, and bizarre it really was. Now, jacked up Joe, he spent most of the night screaming and shouting and speeding his way through a very uncomfortable address. Uh, to put it well, charitably, jacked up Joe looked like an angry, over caffeinated old man. Now, the Joe we saw last night, not the Joe that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Take a look. There's some movement. There's been a response from the, uh, the, the there's been a response. Too many corporations raise prices to pad their profits. Some of you have come in, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of... Every Memorial Day, we hold a service. I inherited economies on the brink. Now our economy is literally the envy of the world. 15 million new jobs in just three years, a record. I think that, uh, as you know, Initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate. Unemployment <laughs> at 50-year lows. I better not start the questions. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> What's your message for Thank Super you. Tuesday voters? Everyone please move this way. Super Thank Tuesday, you. Say, do you have a message Thank for voters? Wall Street didn't build America. They're not bad guys. They didn't build it, though. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. Of course, the left and the uh, left-wing radical media mob, they wasted no time unleashing, of course, their pro-Biden spin about Joe's jacked-up speech. Take a look. This was a feisty speech that at times felt more like a rowdy campaign event than a traditional State of the Union address. I think he addressed this age issue with his aggressive, feisty, ad-lib delivery. I think that helped him. Smoking Joe Biden was on fire during the State of the Union address. He was lit. I thought that was a remarkable, fiery, powerful, vigorous guy. What really, frankly, we were watching last night was the, the president, his command of the issues, his forcefulness and how he presented it all. I thought he just completely blew away the Biden is too old issue last night. It was his best speech of his presidency by far, by far. strongest speech, and most importantly, for people that were thinking, oh, he's too old, he's too this, he's too that, man, he, he like I said, he gave a lot more than he got. Wow, oh, key word, feisty Joe. I hate to break this to the liberal elites and our friends in the media mob, but the American public isn't buying their spin. Uh, Everybody knows that Joe Biden is a frail and a weak cognitive mess. Uh, and despite their best efforts and probably a lot of Red Bull, well, everyone can see that uh, on a pretty much on a daily basis. Now, by the way, here are some of jacked up Joe's lowlights from last night. Watch. The threat to democracy must be defended. As two of my heroes, like many of you did, Dr. King and Bobby Cunningham were assassinated. And their legacies inspired me to pursue a career, a career in service. But Israel has a, excuse me, Israel has a added burden. It's not about him, it's not about me. I'd be a winner, not really. I, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of the thousands of people being killed by illegals? I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but if you want to get an Air Force woman and fly to Toronto, Berlin, Moscow, I mean, excuse me, and it, well, even Moscow, probably. Joe, her name, it was on the button. Lakin Riley. Not Lincoln Riley, Lakin Riley. You are holding her pin. On the pin, her name was written on it. How did you manage to still get it wrong? The American people, they were taking note, and rightly so. Now, right now, jacked up Joe Biden. He is underwater across the board. Most recent Gallup poll, 
He's at a low approval rating, only 38 percent, a far cry from the 50 percent threshold that incumbents typically need if they want to win re-election. And perhaps even more alarming for, well, Joe, is a recent ABC poll shows that, what, 86 percent of you, the American people, think he is too old to serve another term in the White House. And frankly, he is bleeding support from the Democratic Party base, African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, young people, suburban women. These are key demographics that helped elect him in the first place. On every single important issue, well, Joe Biden is receiving failing, failing grades. Now, of course, the Biden campaign, they're taking their big victory lap last night after what was a strange and bizarre address, unlike any we've ever seen before. And of course, they play the race card. I told you this would happen. That's their go-to card to attack Donald Trump. Take a look at this new ad comparing Trump to the KKK. Watch this. I know the American story. Again and again, I've seen the contest between competing forces in the battle for the soul of our nation. Between those who want to pull America back to the past and those who want to move America into the future. Let's take a trip down memory lane, uh, shall we, since Joe's trying to play the race card in his latest attack ad. Well, let's take this trip. You might remember it was Joe Biden, him in the 70s, when dis discussing desegregation policies. Remember, Joe partnered with a real former Klansman and a guy that he called his mentor and his friend against school busing and the integration of public schools. He was worried about those schools and children growing up in schools that, quote, his words, were racial jungles. That was not Donald Trump. That, that was Joe Biden. Biden eulogized that he, pr he praised on the former Klan leader and West Virginia Senator Robert KKK Byrd, not Donald Trump. During the 2020 campaign, it was Joe Biden that bragged about working with segregationists, not Donald Trump. This is just the tip of the iceberg for Biden's checkered racial past. Even Kamala Harris called him out on it during the primary campaign back in 2020. In case you forgot, let us remind you, shall we? Madam President, we have predators on our streets. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. To fully, I'm not joking. What kind of a chance with a northeastern liberal like Joe Biden stand uh, in the South? Better than anybody else. And you don't know my state. My state was a slave state. We got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who was articulate and bright and, and, and clean and a nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook. They're going to put you all back in chains. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Articulate, bright and clean. That's storybook, man. All right, spare us the pearl-clutching and fake and phony and vain outrage over this ludicrous comparison. Joe Biden is the one with blatantly racist history not Donald Trump. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.